So as I've mentioned before, my car came bone stock, the NBT 6.5 inch screen, no touch screen, no Apple CarPlay. Um, you could actually like plug in a USB drive and load music on it. Um, that's essentially an FM AM radio. So I added this system. It's a Eonin um, GN somehow or another, long series of letters and numbers, but essentially it's an Android 8.1 operating system that you can split between the stock, you can access the stock uh, BMW MBT system, and you can toggle between this and the uh, Android 8.1. So I also Apple added Apple CarPlay as well, but essentially it comes with like a GPS antenna, two USB cables, and um, you know, all the essentials for it. It's a hexacore system and uh, comes with two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of read-only memory. And I also added a backup camera to this system as well. So you can see all those connections there. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Everything just plugs in nice and neat. If you know a little bit about car stereos and it's a pretty simple installation and just a little time intensive. So let's move on to the rest of the video here. So I ran the um, auxiliary cable from the Android stereo down to the tra transmission tunnel up into the armrest console. Also ran the two USB cables from the Android system that will provide input for the Apple CarPlay system and for an exterior USB storage device either for pictures or for music. So just to clean up the installation, I got a USB faceplate. So the, the USB cables that run from the Android unit come into this port here. On the left there, you can see the auxiliary in. That is coming from the Android stereo into the BMW MBT system. There also is a stock USB for the MBT system that you can still utilize if you want to which will have to be toggled over to that side of things. So typically I install my 64 gig for my uh, music. This is the Eonin adapter for Apple CarPlay. Just plug that in, then plug in your phone, and you have Apple CarPlay on your system. So when it boots up, you can choose your logo. It's between this logo um, a couple other BMW performance logos and I think you can load other ones as well like even like wallpaper I haven't actually messed with that because I just actually like that clean look of that simple BMW system but they also have like a Audi emblem as well but this is how the Android side looks it mimics the MBT system from BMW and if, here's the Apple CarPlay which I'll switch back from this show you how the Android system looks so this is the music side of it so to, to get it to look like this I just uh, use a, a program called mp3 tag and basically you can take simple mp3s and add pictures to them add uh, your music information artist album title and things like that just to kind of make things a little bit more personalized and uh, it's just everything here works seamlessly there's no lag between uh, fast forwarding, rewinding, and navigating between songs. This is a native navigation system for the Android unit. Uh, you have to have a, it has a SIM card uh, input on the back left. You can use a SIM card the same as you would for a uh, smartphone. And then you have access to, to user maps that way or a Wi-Fi signal. This right here is the Bluetooth. All of this works fine. I just use everything through Apple CarPlay now. And this is Bluetooth music as well. You can also, of course, dial out. Pretty antiquated as far as how that looks, but it, it does work. Car info takes you back to the native MBT system, BMW, give you everything from there. It looks just like it. It's just the resolution has changed for the larger screen size from 6.5 to 
File Manager is just where you load all of your files to for any kind of programs and apps that you use on the Android system. Looks like I have an update there. Dashboard is just a kind of cool looking feature here. Only thing is in kilometers and liters, and I haven't found out a way to change that. So it just looks a little off. It also detects when your doors are open. Settings here, you can set your navigation default, which I had it as uh, maps here, such your language, your time. Audio is your bass treble. And all of your equalizer settings. So you just have a few settings here. I've got one customized. It's not really a intuitive or in-depth equalizer. It's very simple. But it sounds pretty good though. I've got an aftermarket camera as I mentioned. I've got the link below as, as far as the one that I have. Works really good. And it's uh, also the built-in handle, just like the OEM from BMW. And here where you can control your Wi-Fi connections. Set your the BMW logo or if it's a BMW Performance or an Audi. There's some other things in here that you can set, but I didn't mess with anything in here that I remember. This may be something I have to change or update later on when I add the TVs for my son to the back. But whichever image you choose from here is going to be your boot logo. And I believe you can customize that as well. So auxiliary, I think this is probably where I'm going to have to use. Uh, customize this when I add the TVs in the back. Dashboard, back to that dashboard that we had before. Factory settings here for the Android unit. TV. So it's got a lot of features packed in here and you can add different applications here from Google Play Store. So just like this is a Chrome browser, I never use it. I just basically use it for my iPhone anyway. So this is a lot more antiquated and you have to touch the screen and everything. Not everything is navigated um, through iDrive. Google Earth is pretty cool. I hardly ever use that, but it's just kind of a cool feature to have. This is where you can mirror your phone. I think you have to have a certain kind of connector or a certain kind of adapter for this. So you can actually view YouTube on here. I have Waze on there as well. I think you can put Waze on Apple CarPlay. I haven't tried it yet. I'm just used to the native maps in Apple. But here we'll just uh, test a phone call using Siri. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. I'm listening. Call Daddy Cell. Calling Daddy Cell Mobile. So you can see the phone call worked pretty seamlessly. That's the way to do hands-free phone calls. And like I said, everything else is navigated through iDrive and touchscreen as well. You can also navigate through all of these menus um, by touching the screen, swiping up and down, pretty much like an iPhone. 
but typically navigation is a little bit faster than this. You can see my connection on my iPhone. The top left hand corner is pretty low, so your connection on your phone is going to determine how fast Apple CarPlay responds and finds music and navigates to the next song and so on. If you hit dead spot, it's going to affect Apple CarPlay as well. So that's just something to consider. Another feature I really enjoy from using Apple CarPlay is being able to use Maps through Siri. You basically just speak your destination. Nine times out of ten, it finds it just as it would on your phone. So we'll just do a quick example of that. Hey Siri, map to Nevada. Okay, here's Nevada. Starting route to Nevada. Head east on Horizon Wood Lane, then turn right onto Jagged Rock Circle. You can see here that the wireless signal and the LTE signal is pretty low. So navigation and things like that will depend on your phone's signal. So the system will respond just as quickly as your phone is. Like if your phone gets hot and things like that, that's gonna affect um, Apple CarPlay as well. So make sure to keep your phone out of the sun. Um, that's typically what I do is make sure it doesn't get overheated. Put it away like under the dash or something like that or in the armrest. So that kind of wraps it up. It does have limitations. You can't like load YouTube. I think you have to hack the system to be able to do that. Uh, basically any applications that may take your attention off of the road just to be safe, which kind of makes sense. But um, I mean, really do you want to watch YouTube while you're, you know, driving down the highway? But um, that kind of wraps it up. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post it in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer. Like I said, I wish I could have completed the install on video but um, things were just running late at night and frustrations and things like that. So I didn't get an opportunity to do that. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.